The next question that we are given is that the Kaiser Chiefs um, football team calls the Moses Mabita Stadium in Durban their home. So they call those their home base. Nice one. This means they, they do all their practices and home games at the stadium. This beautiful stadium is, crowded, is crowned by an arc. Okay, so this is the arc um, for the Moses Mabita Stadium. That's an arc that's happening over there. And an arc can easily represent um, half of a circle as well. But I'm going ahead of myself. Let's see what the question says to us. Um, it says that the arc is 106 meters above the ground. So we know that that's the height already that they're talking about. So that's going to be from that point maybe all the way to down. Okay, that's going to be 106 meters. And it says to us to its highest point and the highest point being that point um, over there. Tourists can walk or use the sky car to get to the top of the arc. So we've got the sky car over there and that, was, that is what you can use to go from the bottom to the top. Let's see if this information is going to be useful for the question that we have down here. Wikipedia states that the construction costs for the stadium were 3.4 billion South African rands in 2006, which was approximately 450 million American rands. So obviously with American rands, it's going to look smaller because the American rand is stronger to the South, Af I mean, the American dollar is stronger to the South African rand. So you can see already there, you are sitting with 450 million American dollars. Determine what the exchange rate was in 2006 and write your answer in that format. So we are going to use known to unknown. And the reason why um, we are using known to unknown is because what do we know? What don't we know? Okay, so it says to us here, one za is equal to how many dollars and so on and so on. What do we know already? We know that 3.4 billion is equal to 450 million. So billion has three extra zero, zeros on top of million. So I want to write the number out for you guys. Three extra zero, zeros. Okay, let's see how that's going to work out for us. Three, four, zero. So what do we know? That it's got three extra digits. Sorry about that. Three extra digits. Okay. So if I was writing it as a million, I would have had it like that and I would have had those zeros going on there. That would have been 3.4 million. But because it's billion... We're going to add three extra zeros. So it's going to be one, two, three. Okay, I hope that you guys are getting what I'm talking about. So we know already, and I've made this so big and so frumpy. I think I'm going to write it over again so that we've got nice space and we know what we're talking about. So I said to you guys, it's going to be the three, four, zero, zero, three, and the three extra zeros to say billion, okay? And then 450 million. And we know that in terms of million, we've got our one, two, three, one, two, three, okay? I hope that I am doing the correct thing here. Looks correct, 450 million, and then 3.4 billion, stunning, so now let's go and see. We know that this is in za, so it's in rand. And we know that this is USD. So we want to figure out one za will give us how many USDs. Okay, so what am I going to do? Cross multiplication. So I'm going to cross multiply those two with each other. And then when I cross multiply them with each other, I'm going to divide with this Big number over here that I did not use. So 450 million. Let's go put that in our calculator. Four hundred and fifty 
450, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, divided by 3.4 billion. So I said that is going to have how many zeros going on there? 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. There we go. A nice small number. Okay? So, one czar, one rand, <laughs> is going to then give us 0 0.13. Okay? 0 0.13. Therefore, x is equals to 0 0.13 USD. So we've got that now in terms of what's going on in terms of our format over here. That's in terms of now our exchange rate. Okay, perfect. But something seems to be a little bit incorrect. Let me just double check if I've put in all my zeros because I think my zeros could be the problem over here. I said that it's going to be that over there with the extra zeros. Okay, that's fine. Let's go to the next question and see what it looks like. In this particular question, an American family of five decides to go up the sky car. So we've got the sky car now. And our family is going up this car. The family consists of two parents, two children, ages 11 and 14, and one grandparent, which is 73. The tariffs for the sky car are as follows. Normally, when people see this word over here, there's this big panic, okay? But tariffs are not anything that you should be scared of. So, it's going to be two parents, two children, they're each 11 and 14, and the grandparent, um, which is 73. Adults, 60 rand per person. So we know we've got two adults over there. Pensioners, um, which are above 60, are 55 rand. Children under 12. So now let's be super careful. It means that only one child is going to qualify for this. And the other child then becomes an adult. Okay, little sad. So one child is going to qualify for this. One grandparent, one pensioner. And then we're going to have three people over here because the three people is the two parents and then the one child. Stunning. Children under six, free. We don't have a child that's under six um, that is coming through. Learners on school tour. 30 rand per person. We don't have any learners on a school tour. So it says here, calculate what it would cost this family to all go up in the sky car. Okay? What would it cost them? It would cost them, let's go and multiply those together. Whenever you are doing tariffs, you will be multiplying something by something. Okay? So it is going to be 60 rand. Multiplied by three people. I'm going to put that in brackets. Plus 55 rand, which is what the pensioner is paying. Times one person. Plus, I'm going to leave a little space there so it could be neat and visual. 30 rand, which is the one child, because we know we only have one child that's under 12. And I'm going to... Go and put that in my calculator nicely. Do I need a calculator? Not really. Maybe at the end, because I already know that 60 times 3 is 180. But let's go and just double check. 60 times 3 is 180. So 180 rand. That's 4 marks. Make sure you're getting all your 4 marks. Plus 55 rand plus 30 rand, okay? Let's go add those numbers together. 180 plus 55 plus 30. 265. This is the total that this family um, is going to be paying, okay? 
Let's go to the next one. Exchange rates yet again. Exchange rates yet again. Did you see with the previous exchange rate um, that we had, just to give us a minor confirmation and to put us at ease and comfort, it says here, the current exchange rate is that one za is equal to 0 0.08 USD. Just to put us at comfort, because I was a little worried about that previous one. Let's see the previous one that we did have. With the previous one that we did have, the final answer um, that we did have was that one za is equal to 0 0.13 USD. So that question is completely correct. Just putting me at ease as well. Okay, the next question says to us, the current exchange rate is one za is to 0 0.08 USD, which is less than what we calculated before. Determine what the family would be paying for the tickets in USD. We move again from known to unknown. What do we know? We know that one za is equal to 0 0.08 USD. That's what we know, okay? We know that. Now, we want to convert this rand number into USD. We put rands under rands. So, we put our 265 rands under rands. And then again, moving from known to unknown. I love, love, love this method. Why? Because it doesn't make you scratch your head and then do the wrong thing. We cross multiply the two that exist with each other and we divide it by that one over there, which is facing that X. Therefore, 265 times 0 0.08 divided by one. Known to unknown. 265, 200, I shouldn't have removed that, times 0 0.08. And if you divide that by one, it should give you exactly the same answer. So don't be too scared. That will give us 21 and 20 cents. 21, 20 U is D. That's your three marks over there. Okay? Beautiful. Stunning. That's exchange rates. Whenever you are working with exchange rates, it's super, super important um, for you to remember. Remember, and you can say, I keep on saying super important because it's important. If you can remember to move from what do I know, what don't I know? Put them under each other. Put rands under rands, dollars under dollars, centimeter under centimeters, um, and so on and so on. Perfect. Let's see the next question. Still working with this. Use the exchange rate you calculated in 1.1.1 to determine the percentage change um, between 2006 and 2018. So we want to know what the percentage change is going to be, okay? And in terms of our percentage change, I'm just going to give you the formula. Percentage change looks like this. Percentage, okay, I'll write it out as this. Percentage change, you need to know how to use your formula. is equal to the old, no, the new percentage minus the old percentage, so whatever the old percentage is, on top of the old percentage. And this should make sense to you guys. Why should it make sense? It should make sense because now it's here and it's telling us um, that the new is more or less or whatever the case is than the old. And then it's old because it's going to be the percentage change um, in the exchange rate between 2006 and 2018. But in order for us to do a question like that, we must have had um, the numbers to work with in terms of that. That is the formula that we are using. Let's see if we can do this one. don't have a lot of time left, but let's see what we can do. 
the capacity of the stadium when it's full holds 85,000 people and, and an average ticket is 90 rand. If they only manage to sell three quarters, so that's three over four of the tickets. So times 85,000. So that is three over four times 85,000, 63,750, 63,750. That's how many tickets they sold. We multiply that with the 90 Rand, which gives us 5,770,000. 737 and 500. Okay? Stunning.